Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 150, People Say the Strangest Things. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my creative and ever-curious co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. I don't think we've used ever creative before, so Um, that's cool. Always trying to come up with something new here. Nice. So how are we doing today, Maddie? I'm doing all right. Um, You just got some news, didn't you? What was that news? The fact that I ended up being the top highest, well, the highest uh, grade point average in my freshman class. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> and how we magically got like five other kids after the last time. Well, yeah, we're not gonna, we're not gonna. Look the, <laughs> but but that that's even better because you got five more people you were competing against there. Congratulations. Yep. Uh, what are we talking about today? Oh, that camera angle's really bad there. <laughs> All right, we'll have to fix that. Are we going to cut this out? <laughs> no, 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 no. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. <laughs> uh, what are we talking about today? We'll just go to a different camera angle. See, so do that and we fix the problem. No, nah, that's, that's what's still... There we go. That there we the go. <laughs> uh, so what are we talking about? We are talking about funny things in the English language. Now, before I go on my summary spiel here... This was an idea you came up with. What was the impetus for this? Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, first of all, all, it's our 150th episode, and really, I wanted to do something special for it. Um, I didn't want to just do a regular podcast for it. It's not as big as like 100 and 200, but like it's kind of one of those middle milestones, and I kind of wanted to do something fun. I thought a regular Q&A really wouldn't work all that well. And then um, I came up with the idea when me and Mommy were kind of talking with each other. And the idea, and me and her would talk during lunch. And during a certain lunchtime, I was like, hey, were there any things like your teachers told you that like seemed fine as a kid, but now aren't really all that fine or don't really make all that much sense? Um, and then I wanted to try turning that into a podcast because I thought it could be interesting for us to kind of talk about certain sayings that, like, we're told that technically aren't really true. And then it kind of morphed into, okay, we're going to include some other stuff into that because we can't really do an entire podcast based on specifically, um the topic I wanted to discuss. And really it was kind of a lot of, we kind of have to figure out how to, work with the, with this because I really wanted to turn it into, into a podcast and here we are now. Yeah, and, and as I was doing the research for it, I started coming across a whole bunch of different things that I thought might work. So we'll give it a shot, see how it works. So the English language is a funny thing. While words and phrases can have different meanings in different cultures, there are other things that might affect the meaning or even the relevance of a word or phrase. Sometimes these things that once had meaning in the past are no longer relevant because of changes in society. This can sometimes conjure misconceptions or misunderstandings. Other times, a phrase changes so much that the true meaning of the phrase itself is lost. While other phrases are often misheard, misunderstood, or just murder the English language, kind of like when you hear the wrong lyrics of a song, which might be a podcast in the future for us. On today's episode of Insights into Teens, we're going to take a look at a few of the phrases that stand out to us. We'll shed some light on them, alleviate some misconceptions, and maybe even entertain you along the way. 
But before we do that, though, I do want to invite our listening and viewing audience to subscribe to the podcast. You can find audio versions of this podcast listed as insights into teens. You can also find video and audio versions of the podcast and all of our podcasts listed as insights into things. And you can find them anywhere you can get a regular podcast these days. I'd also like to invite you to give us your feedback on what we're talking about or give us your suggestions for show topics. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com or you can visit us on the web at our official website and get links to pretty much all of our social media at www.insightsintothings.com. Ready? Yep. Here we go. So the first thing we're going to talk about are sayings that just aren't true anymore. And this is sort of what started off with uh, the whole podcast idea when you're having your discussion. <clears throat> there are sayings in our society that are repeated often enough that they're almost written in our memories. They often reflect how society behaved at one point in time, but through changes in our society and acceptable behavior, they've largely lost their meaning. While they may not be relevant to today's society, they do serve to give us a glimpse as to how things were in the not-too-distant past. In fact, I remember many of these being in the normal, acceptable societal behaviors when I was a kid. So here's a few. The first one, back then, we'll say, was snitching is wrong. Well, today, snitching, or at least telling an adult about something that other students are doing because, uh, blah, blah, blah. oh, sorry, <clears throat> I missed a line. Yeah. Line, please. <laughs> Snitching, or at least telling an adult something that other students are going through because they won't say anything, can help kids stay out of trouble and can also prevent acts of bullying and abuse of a kid and abuse a kid is facing who's too scared to speak out. There are more benefits to snitching. There are more benefits to snitching now than the, than drawbacks. Boy, that was a hard one to get through. <laughs> I don't know how that was hard for you to I get through. I don't know. What else do we have? We have one that kind of was a major one for me is that, well, in my scenario, if a boy is mean to a girl, it means he likes her. The thing is now, this really isn't true. If a person likes you, they wouldn't be actively hurting you. The main problem resides in the fact that it also glorifies the act of bullying by painting it as an act of love. While bullying can severely damage someone's self-esteem and can lead to mental health issues like depression, it can cause these, iscued, these issues to escalate even further. See, even you stumbled there. Just because I said a word wrong. It's not like I skipped it. It wasn't like you said a whole paragraph wrong. I know, thanks. <laughs> what else do we have? Uh, we also had then people would say it's rude to ask people about their disability. Now, knowledge is pretty much power at this point. While someone, while some people might be, while some people might not like others bringing up their disability, it can be a good learning opportunity for kids who don't have a disability to know it, how it can affect the life of a person that does. And it's a great opportunity for them to learn that they can still live a normal life um, like a kid that didn't have um, the disability um, can too. In air quotes. In air qu I don't like calling it a disability. We, you, have to do, you have to call it something, right? What else was there to call it? I don't know what else you would call it. Yeah. People used to call it a handicap, but it's really not a handicap. So I don't, I don't know what the proper term is. Maybe that's something we could do a little research on. Yeah. Uh, so then they used to say, you need to find love in order to settle down and be happy. Well, that's not really the case. There are people who never get married or date that live perfectly content single lives. They could be living on their own with friends and roommates or with pets and have a well-paying job and a good home as well as hobbies that they enjoy, along with connections that aren't romantic. And that's absolutely true. Uh, back then, they used to say the only purpose in school is to get a good college edu get into a good college. Well, today I think we all realize that even though a lot of what we do in high school pushes us towards college, that college isn't for everyone. 
people can, people can still get well-paying jobs without a college degree. Just ask my dad. There you go. <laughs> Moving right along. Now, this one, then, like, this one's still kind of one that I feel people still kind of talk about, but are, is now starting to get a bit more traction, is that boys don't cry. Boys absolutely cry. Especially when you kick them in the shins. <laughs> So, this undermines the emotions of men, saying that because you're a guy, you need to put on a masculine exterior, because otherwise, you're seen as weak. However, a guy experiencing emotions and seeking help is incredibly strong. They are willing to try and deal with their emotions, and they took a large step seeking for help. These men tend to be stronger than men that actually normally ooze toxic masculinity. Toxic masculinity, I like that phrase. It sounds like a perfume or a men's cologne. Mm. Mm, what are you wearing? Toxic masculinity. <laughs> I mean, it goes great with like the grenade bomb, um, <laughs> uh, obsidian. There you go. Other textures that axe. <laughs> axe. I wear axe. What do you wear? Toxic masculinity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, another one that people are starting to bring into question is, ironically, that kids shouldn't question an adult. Newsflash, adults are wrong all the time. Not just, all the time. Sometimes I'm right. I mean, just check Twitter. <laughs> I was right yesterday. <laughs> mm. All right, fine. Telling kids not to question adults is how we don't expand and learn. Questioning something is what makes kids smarter and helps them to find flaws and try to fix them. There you go. Failure is bad. <clears throat> not to be confused with failure is not an option. That was a movie line that was never actually said in real life. Hmm. We know failure isn't bad. You know, we've said before on the podcast, failure mistakes are learning opportunities. If you fail at something, it's okay. Learn why you failed and learn how to not to repeat it. We learn more from our failures than our successes. I'm going to copyright that because I'm pretty sure that's like our trademark on this podcast. Here. At this point, kind of. Complaining is the same as not being grateful. Criticism can also be categorized as complaining. And in that case, it's certainly not the same thing as ungrateful. While certain forms of complaining can be seen as ungrateful, it's unfair to label complaining in general the same as not being grateful. Outwardly expressing discontent at something can help us improve and most of the time isn't directly being ungrateful. Now, we did a podcast on complaining and how to complain. Complaining, it's, it might sound comical, and I'm not cracking a joke, but complaining is an important part of society. Things don't get fixed if you don't complain about them. Nobody complains when everything's working fine. Yeah. Case in point, there was a water main that broke in Philadelphia. Uh, it was on the news today. And that water main was put in in like 1896 or something like that. And it's worked fine until it stopped working. And nobody complained about it when people were getting leaks here and leaks there. Well, when it fails catastrophically and it floods like dozens of homes and ruins vehicles and streets and cars and there's millions of dollars in damage, well, it's not working now. So now we're going to complain about it. Well, had someone complained about it before, they would have replaced that hundred and some year old water pipe nothing gets fixed if you don't complain about it. yeah ironically what else do we have? uh the next one is specifically tended to direct towards men and it's that you shouldn't hit a woman that's not true women hit women too well yeah but like the main point is that you shouldn't hit anyone violence isn't the answer in any case it is it is marking the stereotype that women are fragile and a man shouldn't hurt them but again, you really just shouldn't hurt anyone. Amen to that. Um, another common one that's still said today is um, that, per that practice makes perfect. And that's the thing. Perfection is an unrealistic expectation for practicing. What practice re will really give you is progress. You'll never get perfect at something, even if you practice it. You'll get better, you just won't be perfect. I love that phrase. Practice gives you progress. That's another one that I think we should copyright here. That's going to be us. That All works. All right. Boys will be boys. 
Now, there's a lot of different meanings to that in today's society, but specifically what we're talking about is the fact that this is a sexist remark focusing on the typical stereotype of boys that they're always trying to start trouble. Assuming that all boys are, quote, the same, it's ridiculous considering everyone is different. And just because many boys may cause trouble doesn't mean it's the case for every boy. And part of this goes back to the fact that in high school, in grade school, whatever, boys mature at a different rate than girls do. Mm -hmm. So the boys tend to mentally mature later in, in puberty than the girls do. So as a result of that, they get this uh, stigmatism that they're always causing trouble. So there's some truth behind it, but it's not quite what it, what it used to be. And this is one that you love. You should smile more. Uh, okay. This philosophy causes more problems than it solves. It's a blatant attempt to deprioritize mental illness and is basically like saying, even though you aren't happy, you should appear so for other people's benefit. It furthers the idea that people need to hide their emotional problems from society in order to be accepted and function properly. And it encourages people not to seek help if they do have problems. And the one thing that we're big on here is find the help that you need. It's out there. Find it. Don't hide it. Accept what you are and who you are. And what's the uh, last one we have? Well, we have two more. We do? Oh, we do. Look at that. I didn't scroll all the way down. <laughs> it's fine. Um, so a common phrase you'll still technically hear nowadays is that, oh, you'll understand when you have kids. So where to even start? For one, you're assuming that in the future, the child you're speaking to will eventually have kids, even though not everyone dreams of having them or even really suited to take care of a child. Two, you assume that every parent experiences the same thing. Parenting is a complicated experience that, while people can relate to certain parts, is different for everyone. Teens who later have kids more than likely will have a different experience being a parent than you. I will say, being a parent, that my perspective on this is kind of biased because there are things that give me perspective in life as a parent that I could honestly say I would never experience if I didn't have kids. Now, the fact that you're kind of telling people, you're, you're being derogatory and that you're saying, you'll never understand this until you have kids. Meaning, well, they need to have kids. That's the part, I think, of the statement that's the problem. Yeah, I figured that would more than likely be the main problem, assuming that, like, oh, everybody's going to have kids, so everybody has to have that experience or something. Right. There are, there are things that we as individuals will never understand without experiencing them. And there are lots of things that we don't want to experience. You know, I'll never know, hopefully, I'll never know what it's like to be in like a nuclear blast. But there are people that are alive today that have survived that, that know what it's like. You know, I'll never know what it's like to, to be slim and in shape. <laughs> but there are people that know that, you know? So there are certain things that if you don't go through those experiences, it's very difficult to understand them. I can imagine I can sympathize or I can empathize with you. But, you know, one of the other ones that I was going to put in here was, you know, the phrase that parents just don't understand. And they don't. And it's very similar to this one. You're going through something similar to what I went through, maybe, but not the same. So I don't understand what you're going through. I understand what I went through. And perhaps in conveying that and how I dealt with it, it might help you to deal with what you're going through. So not everyone goes through the same experiences, but this one here, I think the real problem is you're assuming they're going to have kids. And I think that assumption is where we take exception. Yeah. And now for the last one. That was the penultimate last one. This is yes. the last one. This last one I technically have more of an experience with, and that is the saying that you're really good for a girl. Now, this one is not really all that hard to figure out. Excess, ex, eh. 
I botched that. <laughs> yes, as much as me. <laughs> it's sexist for pointing out the stereotype that girls are weaker than boys, which in many cases really isn't true. And I've had a personal experience with this. Not intend- It wasn't really directed at me, but it sort of followed the lines of this. And, I me- and I've mentioned this on the podcast before, but it was during my physics class where, ironically, I was the only girl in the room. And the substitute teacher was talking to some of the boys in the background, again, not directed towards me. But the boys did something, and the teacher, distinct- and the teacher said that um, I've seen girls that are stronger than you, or something along those lines. And, yeah, I didn't really... It was it was kind of shocking to me. Yeah. Because it's like... And for the record, it was a substitute teacher. Yeah. It wasn't your regular physics teacher. She took care of it, though. Yep. Literally. like She, <laughs> she came back, man, and she, she took care of that with a vengeance. So kudos <laughs> to her for that. Yeah, so I've personally had experience with this, and like... It doesn't seem, well, nowadays it kind of seems harmless. No, nowadays it seems more harmful. Um, But, like, it used to be one of those sayings that nobody really cared about until, like, recently. And I really hope that this kind of goes away. Yeah. I think a lot of these need to kind of go away. And that, like, like, these types of things are statements that lead to mistreatment. Like, for instance, that statement alone, I can remember growing up as a, as a kid, and people would get picked for teams, and they'd always pick the girls last because the boys didn't want the girls on their team. And it's like, well, you know, some of the girls here are much better than some of the boys. Just because they're girls doesn't mean they shouldn't get picked. Yeah. Um, and I'm in the process of doing research for a new Insights Into Tomorrow episode where we're going to talk about uh, fundamental women's rights and, and how they progressed and so forth. And it was an eye-opener to see how slow things have progressed over time. There's sh- small leaps and then no progress at all. And then now certain things are being regressed back to where they were before. Um, and it's unfortunate because I don't think any segment of the population deserves that kind of treatment. And when you say something like that where comparing someone to a girl is meant to be derogatory, you clearly don't understand women. You don't understand how capable girls can be if you're going to make a statement like that. And it's the same thing even with when it comes to the boys. A lot of the times when you see that, it's either undermining the fact that all boys are the same with the fact that they are troublemakers and the fact that they mature later on than girls do. And also... Society tends to undermine the fact of men's mental health. Absolutely. So, honestly, it's it can go both ways. With women, they're being undermined. With men, they're being they're not allowed to express their emotions like women are. Yeah, there are there are prejudices that are built into society, and some of these phrases kind of highlight those prejudices. And even though they're just words, words have an effect. You know, they have an effect today. These are phrases that are decades old that still have an effect today. And I think the important takeaway from, I guess, this initial discussion is be mindful of what you say because what you say has an effect on people. And that effect has ripples out. You know, what you say today has an effect, you know, in the long term on that person who that person interacts with and who they interact with set a good example. Yeah. And like, I also kind of thought of another common phrase that people say is that actions speak louder than words, but words can still speak like really loudly to people. You can get like a small compliment from like someone can give you a small compliment and you just feel amazing from it. Or someone can just say something so hurtful that, And that's the thing. It's a double-edged sword, right? So on one hand, you can compliment someone, lift them up, inspire them to do great things. And in the next breath, you could say something derogatory to someone and tear them down and, and, you know, give them a level of anxiety that that just isn't warranted. Anyway, 
I think we're going to take a break here. We're going to come back and we're going to talk about some sayings that have lost their original meanings. We'll be right back. For seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today we're talking about people say the strangest things. And now we're going to discuss sayings that have lost their original meaning. There are a lot of popular phrases that we use on a daily basis to convey simple meanings or life lessons. Some of these are pretty old and over time have changed. They've been shortened or may, be, or may reference things that don't exist anymore. Some of these have mutated so much that the meaning we attribute them today may be completely different from what they were originally intended to convey. Here's a few examples. So the current saying we have is one that's incredibly popular, is that curiosity killed the cat. Um, with the current meaning, basically meaning, you should not try to find out about something which doesn't concern you. The original saying is actually much longer, saying, Curiosity killed the cat, but satisfaction brought it back. The original, me the original phrase warns against diving too deep into a needless, needless investigation, but the later amendment, first recorded in American newspapers sometime in the early 1900s, plays on the trope of cat's nine lives to change the meaning. Here... There's pleasure in finding out something you really want to know. That's interesting. So another one that we hear a lot is great minds think alike. So the current meaning, as we understand it, is used to emphasize a coincidence or two people reaching the same conclusion in a manner, of t uh, manner at the same time. So you and I say the same thing. We say, oh, great minds think alike. Well, the original saying is, again, a little bit longer. It says, great minds think alike, though fools seldom differ. The etymology of the phrase is mostly unknown, but it's meant to suggest it's foolish people, not great minds, that are more likely to have the same banal thoughts all the time. Another one that's commonly used is that blood is thicker than water, meaning a person's family is more important than a, than a person's other relationship or needs. The original saying actually, play, like, the original saying is, like, has way more words mixed in with the original words, saying, the blood of the covenant. covenant is thicker than the water of the womb, basically meaning a chosen blood covenant provides a stronger bond than any family. So the, so the friends or the, uh, the associates that you bond to you, you choose. You don't get to choose your family, you get to choose your friends, and it's that bond that's stronger. So it's basically the exact, exact opposite, opposite of the original yeah. saying. Yeah, which is funny. Some of these are like that. Uh, this is another good one. Money is the root of all evil, which means greed is the cause of a particular problem or the cause of society's problems in general. Well, the original saying is actually... Um, a Bible text that says, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Now, when you take it like this, both the full original quote and the short and common version originate from the Bible um, that warns against greed, but reading the full version of the quote doesn't completely change the meaning of the one we all know best, but it might shift your perspective a bit. It really means having money isn't a problem. It's wanting money, 
that's the problem or that's sinful. So again, it's another shift in the meaning of what the original phrase was. Then we have jack of all trades, master of none, meaning a person who can do many things but is not an expert at any of them. The original saying is longer, like some of these typically are. Jack of all trades, master of none, though oftentimes better than the master of one. This saying has been through a lot. It begins as simply jack of all trades, and most fla- a most flattering term for a generalist who has honed many skills. Later, master of none was added on to change the phrase to something slightly derogatory, suggesting that the jack of all trades doesn't know much at all. The shady two-part phrase is what most know and use today, but at some point it was amen- amended? amended amended again to check the to check the haters. The full phrase says something like, I know a little about a lot of things, and that's better than having a limited skill set any day. Much more complicated than originally thought. Yep. The last one that we have in this particular category is an old adage that says, Starve a cold, feed a fever. I think everybody's heard that one. And today's meaning means that fasting is the right way to treat a cold. Well, the original quote is, if you starve a cold, you'll have to feed a fever. Which really means, if you fast during a cold, you'll be even sicker longer. And you'll wind up getting the fever. So eat during the cold. So... It's interesting how some of these things, and this is just kind of a handful of examples of what these uh, phrases are and and how the English language has changed around these things, that they've got completely different meanings. Can you think of anything else that we might not have talked about? Um, hmm. These are all, like, really good ones. Um, The other one, the other ones that come to mind to me are nursery rhymes. Like a great one that nobody ever really knew the meaning to was Ring Around the Rosie. Oh, yeah. What is the meaning of that? I know it has to do about the bubonic plague and the fact that you would get, like, rings. on, Like, basically, you'd. I think it was, like, it was something on your skin that made it look like, like right. red rings. Right, so when you got the bubonic plague, you would get what are called buboses, which is where the term bubonic plague came from. And you'd get round sores on your hands that would have red rings, rash, a rash around them. So you would have the rings there. People would carry, because they didn't understand where the germs came from, they would carry rose petals in their pockets. And they would sniff the rose petals thinking that that would help to ward off the evil spirits that were causing it. So you'd have rings around the rosies. And then... The term, everyone sings it as ashes, ashes fall down. It's actually ashes, ashes, as if you're sneezing. Because you would do get rings around the rosies, you would sneeze, you would fall, and you would die. So it's really a morbid, like, terrible nursery rhyme if you listen to it and you, you attribute the meaning. And then you all, and like I have I want to put another example out. I don't entirely know the origins of it, but it kind of gets creepy when you kind of look into it more and more is Humpty Dumpty. You know, about the little leg that fell off the brick wall, the uh king's horses and men couldn't put him back together. But it gets really creepy when you realize that it didn't specify that Humpty was an egg. Yeah. So it makes you think. Yeah, that's again, that's more. But that's very similar to like the Grimm's fairy tales, which all your Disney princess fairy tales are really based off of. But if you go back and read the Grimm's fairy tales, there's no such thing as a happy ending there. Yeah, um, the best example I can give is The Little Mermaid, where instead of just giving up the voice and the happy, friendly kid manner that uh, Disney put it out, she literally cut off her tongue. Right, right. So the Grimm's fairy tales were very dark, and somehow Disney thought they were good exp- inspirations for, for a nice little happy ending kid stories where everyone lives happily ever after. Snow White's ending is probably the one that scared me the most. Well, we're, we won't go into that. 
here because it is yeah. pretty morbid. Yeah. So anyway, just another example of how English language and, and the phrases that we think we know might have different meanings. Uh, so we're going to take our last break. We're going to come back and we'll talk about what I describe as some head-scratching phrases. We'll be right back. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights in the Teens. Today we're talking about people say the strangest things. And now we're going to talk about head-scratching phrases. Now there are some phrases that have been passed down over the years that simply don't make sense. They seem contradictory to themselves. Some are just simple misquotes that have carried forward like the wrong lyrics of a song. Here are a few examples. The first one we have is a very common one, meaning by the saying, same difference. But the thing is, why are you comparing differences? Why wouldn't you just say why wouldn't you just say same thing? Right. And this is a saying that I've been using that I know that you have been like criticizing me on. It's one of the phrases. I'm interested to see if you also put the other phrase that I used to say that I'm not saying anymore. <laughs> if not, I'm going to mention it. Then we have I don't disagree with you. But doesn't that mean you actually agree with me? If you do, just say that you agree. It sounds much more positive and upbeat rather than, you know, the, oh, yeah, I, I don't disagree with you. I had a guy I worked with years ago, and he never agreed with anybody. And it was he was such a, I, I'm going to say disagreeable person, but, like, he was argumentative and abrasive. And, like, nobody liked the guy because he never had anything nice to say. The nicest thing he would say is, well, I don't disagree with it. So then you agree with me, right? No, I just don't disagree with you. He just, on principle, wouldn't agree with people. And it was just driving everybody crazy. That's why that one made this list. Mm. And, yes, your same difference one made the list. The other one didn't, though. I know which one you're talking about. Dang it. The one that I hear a lot that, again, I still kind of say drives it well. me crazy. I could care less. Oh, well, so then you care some, right? Because if you can care less, you have some caring to give. Yeah. But most people probably don't think that that's what they're trying to convey. When most people say this, they're trying to convey a lack of caring about something. So you probably want to say something like, I couldn't care less. Or just say, I could care more. <laughs> I mean, okay. I'm I mean, not sure that gets the point across either, but eh. sure. The other one, and this one is just really people not knowing the English language, is the point that point's mute. It's not mute. Now, it could be mute if you're making a point and, the, and it, quote, falls on deaf ears, then it's mute. That means you can't hear it. But most people are trying to convey a lack of meaning or significance of the point being made. So they probably mean it's moot, meaning having little or no practical relevance. Mm -hmm. What else do we have? We also have for all intensive purposes. While there's technically nothing wrong with this phrase, it's probably not what you mean when you use it. This would mean something like, for all purposes that require a lot, a lot of effort in a short time. What you probably mean is for all intents and purposes, meaning that one thing is the, has the same effect or result as something else. 
You also have another one being pull yourself up by your bootstraps. This is a phrase that would that would have lived that would have lived lift well under our previous segment. Oh wait, no, that is fit. Fit. Yeah, I don't know where you get live there. I don't know. You got an eye. I said That's lift. <laughs> Uh, this is a phrase that would have fit well under our previous segment because it's one that's changed its meaning over time. Originally meant to convey an attempt to do something absurd, it changed sometime in the 1920s and evolved into an expression related to doing something without outside help. Do you know what bootstraps are, by the way? Not really. So on, on boots, there's hooks on either side, on, on like cowboy boots and stuff like that. And you're supposed to put your fingers in there so you can pull the boots up. Ah. Uh. That's a bootstrap. Imagine trying to lift yourself up by your bootstraps. It's physically impossible to do so. Yes. So, hence why it was meant to me convey something absurd. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Meaning not to worry about a possible problem until it actually happens. The phrase itself is kind of silly when you think about it. You can't very well cross a bridge until you come to it. So you you can't do it beforehand. So it's kind of silly the way it is. But again, it's one of those absurd statements there to, to prove a point. Yeah. The other one I love is, oh, I got the wrong end of the stick. This is another curious saying that probably doesn't hold up too well today. What in the world are you doing with your sticks that you have a right end of a stick and a wrong end of a stick? <laughs> you, you're poking at some place you shouldn't be at that point, I think. <laughs> then we have the phrase, head over heels in love. Most people usually have their head over their heels when they're upright. Why would this have anything to do with falling in love? <laughs> yeah, I love that. It's another one that confuses me. Like, it, l- Love has a lot of weird sayings, and this is probably one of the ones that like most people normalize, but... When you think about it, it's probably one of the weirder ones. Yeah. Then you have, you can't have your cake and eat it too. In fact, the only way you can eat your cake is to first have it, otherwise you wouldn't be able to eat it. And what's the point of having cake if you aren't going to eat it? Amen to that. (laughs) And here's one that doesn't probably mean the same thing, but a little little bird told me. Now this one finally makes sense in the age of Twitter. (laughs) Because a lot of birds tell me a lot of things on Twitter these days. Mm. And I can only imagine back in the day that this was a phrase that a pirate would say, referring to his parrot whispering in his ear or something like that, you know? I mean, that'd be kind of funny if it was. It, uh, exactly. Make that, in the, make that in the new Pirates of the Caribbean movie. There you go. And here's another one that goes with the last uh, previous one I had. More than you can shake a stick at it. Well, there we go with the sticks again. Why are we shaking sticks at anything? <laughs> And how can you possibly have too many of something to shake a stick at? I don't get that. Hmm. Now we have time heals all wounds. Unless, of course, they're fatal wounds. Then it doesn't matter how much time you have there. Yeah. Then you have another one of the love thing is that love makes the world go round. Sure, if by love you mean gravity and inertia. Science. Science. <laughs> There's more than one way to skin a cat. I I don't even want to imagine how this phrase came about. Yeah, neither do I. There has to be a better alternative to express there's many ways to achieve a goal than skinning cats. Yeah, I don't think that's something that most people would like to imagine. (laughs) No. no. And the last one that we have here is you're one of a kind. Well, fortunately, since human cloning is still illegal, we're all one of a a kind. Even identical twins are unique individuals. So, again, there was a a whole slew of these that kind of came out of my research. These were the ones that kind of stuck out. What was the one you were thinking of? Uh, The one I was thinking of is Needless to Say. Yes. And then you would always go on saying, if it's needless to say, you don't need to say it. Exactly. If it's needless to say, why are you saying it? (laughs) Yeah. So there's lots of stuff out there. Can you think of anything else off the top of your head? Um, I used to have, in fact, my mentor when when I was working an early job here, a brilliant man, got along with him great, with an Indian gentleman named Deepak. 
Um, had a lot of respect for him. He used to say, and it was partially his accent, but it was a phrase that he would say all the time, unless it ends up. And I, I was like, what does, what does that mean? What, what are you saying? Because he would say it so fast. And eventually I realized it wasn't unless it ends up. He was saying unless and until. And it took me like three years of working with the man to figure out what exactly he was saying there. And I'm like, oh, okay, that kind of makes sense now. But he used it all the time. How about love makes the world blind or love makes people blind or whatever Lo that is? Well, love is blind. Oh, love is blind. Love is blind. Justice is blind too, but justice and love don't really go together too well. <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of silly things and it's like, there's a, I guess there's a entomology, an origin to a lot of these phrases that has just been lost over time as to why these things make any sense at all. Um, it's raining cats and dogs. Mm. At what point was that ever a thing? <laughs> oh, yeah, idi idioms. Break a leg as in an encouraging way. Do right. well. It's like when you're telling someone to break their leg, it doesn't sound like you're trying to encourage them. Or our version of when you're going to a comic book show, break a rib. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I think that's a good note to stop on there. <laughs> or in the case of marching band, break your knees. Break your knees. There you go. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so yeah, the, today was just a, you know, we're marking the 150th. We were, we've been doing a couple of hard-hitting ones, so it was nice to just sort of unwind and have a little bit of fun with this one today. I don't think we're coming back with any closing thoughts. I don't really think there's any closing thoughts or shout-outs to do. Probably not. Uh, so we'll just, you know, barrel right on through here and uh, once again invite our uh, listening and viewing audience to subscribe to the podcast. Uh, you can get audio versions listed as insights into teens. Audio and video versions of all of our podcasts can be found listed as insights into things on Apple, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, etc., etc. Uh, we'd also invite you to reach out, contact us, give us your feedback, email us at comments at insights into things dot com. Hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can find high-res versions of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. We do stream five days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast, or you can get links to all those and much more on our official website at www.insightsintothings.com and you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights into Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother Sam. Except this week, when we're switching hosts of the two shows and trying something new out. Yeah, should I rephrase what I just said? Nah, that's good enough. That's, All right. it's, typically, that's who the hosts are, but we're going to change things up a little bit. We've got some interesting topics that, uh, that are, we're bringing special hosts in, we'll say, for in this case here. But anyway, that's it. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.